It is a joy to welcome you to our service of uh, carols and readings where together again on Christmas 2020 we get to retell and also relive the greatest story that has ever been told. That is the story of God's great love for this world, a love that was so great that he gave his one and only son. And this Christmas we get to celebrate this again, the arrival of Jesus Christ, the, the saviour of the word, Emmanuel, who is God come to be with us. So may I welcome you on behalf of all of those who have taken time to prepare this service and taken part in it. Uh, our prayer is that as you follow through the carols and the readings that the living God will uh, come and speak to you and encourage you and fill your heart with that knowledge of his great grace and his great love for you. So welcome from wherever you may be joining us and uh, also from whatever chapter of life you may be walking through in these days. Uh, let us know that the living God is with us in this because of Christmas. So let us worship him now. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labour you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until, the return, until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. sky. It's the same that appeared and the wise men revered when hope was born this night. Out upon the snowy fields, there's a silent peace that heals, and it echoes the grace of our Savior's embrace, because hope was born this night. Christmas bells ring 
Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. He was a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who has said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Father, as we come before you now in prayer, please still our minds and our hearts from the busyness of today. We thank you for your presence tonight as we worship, honour and adore you by reading the Bible and singing Christmas carols. Please cleanse our minds and hearts from all distractions as we celebrate how you sent a saviour for the world in the form of a little baby born in a manger. We think of nothing but the birth of Jesus, our Redeemer, right now. Fill us by the power of your Holy Spirit to feel the love that you have for each and every one of us listening tonight. Thank you that you poured out your love on mankind so freely over 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to earth to save sinners like me. Father, we thank you that the birth of Jesus ushered in the long-awaited age of a new kingdom on earth, the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus is the ruler of the kingdom both now and forevermore. As John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen.
that night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I will bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognise him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God has placed. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby, lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. God speaks 
when nations stir up conflict with each other, I wonder, do we listen? God speaks when politics in our country or in Europe causes uncertainty about trade or travel or food supplies even. And as he speaks, I wonder, are we listening? God speaks when a virus brings suffering and grief and loss of hope. Are we listening? God speaks when the darkness of life presses in on our physical, our mental, our well-being. Are we listening? When the losses, the, the pressures and disappointments of life are too close, too loud or too hard, God speaks. So let us listen because his word to us this Christmas has never been more important. And yes, you know, the living God of the Bible, he does speak to our day just as he did in the past uh, all throughout scripture and one of those occasions is to the people who lived and worked and did what they do as we do today in Isaiah 9. They were enduring their time of great suffering. They were desperately searching for a light in their darkness and the word of God it spoke to them as he speaks to us. He says that that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. So what a promise of suffering ended we have and how it lifts our hearts. And so tonight from Isaiah 9, God speaks to the families of the, the villages and towns and nations of this world on the 20th of December 2020. Just as he did to the families of Galilee who were there and then in their time of suffering at the hands of those brutal oppressors that are referred to from Zebulun and Naphtali. The brutal oppressors of our time, of this night, they are different. But God, same two promises of verse 1 and 2 of Isaiah 9, they give us truth to believe a truth that fuels our faith and that fans the fire of a certain hope. The first of these promises is that there will be a time of rejoicing because light will shine that destroys darkness. There will be a time of rejoicing because light will shine that destroys darkness. This is God's word to us in verse 2 where he says, People who walk in darkness, they will see a great light. A light that will shine on all who live in the land where death casts its shadow. Jesus Christ of Christmas is this light. Jesus says this in his own words about this promise to you and me to be light. It's recorded by John in chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, the light of life. And that light of life is Jesus Christ with his all-powerful divine nature, which destroys darkness just in the same way as the rising sun destroys the night. And Jesus' life gives all who believe, all who believe his life that is eternal and full and free. And so this is the time to say yes to his life. 
promise too of this passage is that there will be a time when chains are broken of the things that oppress and burden. There will be a time, God says, when the chains are broken of the things that oppress and burden. This is God's word to us, to you. In verse 3 he says, God will break the chains that bind. God will break the chains that bind. And Jesus himself again in his own words recorded by Luke in chapter 4 verse 18 and 19. He tells us what that looks like in people's lives. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has appointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's grace has come. So as you listen just now, this, this day, this night, this is the time to ask Jesus to break what binds you to break, to take away what burdens you. And so the question becomes, what do we do with these two promises that God makes to us at this time? Do we dismiss them? No. We allow faith into our hearts. We stop saying no to the truth of God's word. Instead, we say yes to belief. Yes to trust. And what would that sound like? Well, it would sound like the words of a man who Mark writes about in his gospel who needed Jesus to come and heal his son. And his words were, Jesus, I believe. Help my unbelief. And so to help our unbelief to be overcome, and let's be honest, we all need help to believe. God the Father, he meets us right now in this time, in this moment, and he speaks again from the remainder of this little passage in Isaiah 9 to give us five reasons, five reasons to believe and trust in Jesus. And those five reasons are found in the names that God gives to his son there. Firstly, he says, Jesus is the child who's born for you. Jesus is the child who is born for you. In Jesus Christ, God has kept his promise of giving his best to you, of giving his son to die in our place to forgive the sin that would separate us from God. And Jesus is the child of Christmas given for you, given for me to be saviour, to be the one who would gladly give his life to bring us to God, pardoned, cleansed, made whole. And that's why we believe him. Reason two for belief, Jesus is your wonderful counsellor. Jesus is the one who brings you and I the limitless grace of God's wisdom, of knowing the way. And Jesus shows us God in the Bible. He shows us God's best way in the Bible for each and every day of life and every turn and every decision as we ask him in prayer. Jesus is our wonderful counsellor. We believe in him. Reason three for belief is that Jesus is your mighty God. No one or no thing in heaven or earth and time or eternity is stronger than Jesus. He is the lion who roars in victory over sin and the cross and death in the tomb. Jesus is victor. He stands with Satan's head crushed under his heel. Jesus Christ is invincible 
and those in whom he lives are safe. And so we believe because he is the mighty God. And we believe because Jesus also is the everlasting Father. He is the one who is the source of immortality. John 1 verse 12, again, God's word, it puts it like this, to those who receive him, that is Jesus, he gives the right to be called children of God. So when you and I invite Jesus into our soul, he moves immortality in. He moves it in with him. And with his moving into our heart and life and soul comes the guarantee of an eternal home in God's new heaven and earth that he will recreate from this broken one when Jesus returns. This immortality is the only hope that you or I have or anyone has in the face of death and it is the only escape from God's just punishment on the sin of those who die without Christ. And so we believe. And reason five for belief is that Jesus is our, our Prince of Peace. Jesus brings peace between us and God as we are forgiven for that stuff that would separate us from him. And Jesus then, he becomes peace in all else of life, all of its storms and all of its turmoil and all of its trouble and all of its change. And this is Jesus' promise again at this time, right now, John 14, 27, he says, my peace I leave with you. And so we have five reasons to trust and believe that Jesus indeed is light in the darkness. And so as you view this, the 20th of December, when it will go out to be published in our carol service, at the end of a year like no other, God speaks with love, with grace to all of your life and mine. Are we listening? Am I listening? Jesus is the perfect light who destroys the darkness, who frees from oppression, who gives pardon, who gives wisdom, security, immortality and peace. Jesus was born at Christmas for this, for us, to bring us God's best. So let's listen. Let's believe. Let's trust. This is the time to say, we will. The time to say, I will. The dad of Mark 19, we referred to a minute or two ago, he gives us the perfect words with which to say yes. Jesus, I believe. Help my unbelief.
At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor over Syria. All returned to their own towns to register for this census. Because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazarene in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was obviously pregnant at this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people, Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went on their way. 
And the star that they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for following through the, the greatest story of God's love for you and I in this world. Thank you as you have followed through the carols and the scriptures. And as our time together comes to its end, our prayer here in the church family of First Donegore for you and yours is that uh, this Christmas time and as you prepare to step into the new year, that the Lord will bless you, that the Lord will keep you, that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and that you will know that bountiful grace of this great, great God. So thank you for joining us. And again, on behalf of we here and the church family of First Donegore, uh, we send to you and yours a very, very happy Christmas.